what we are going to try to uh, look is if you have a traditional infrastructure uh, for deploying a solution, how you can move it to a cloud-based deployment. So uh, first of all, uh, I'll give you an introduction to uh, cloud. Then I'll walk you through eight steps that you can follow for making this uh, process successful. Then I'll walk you through how WC2 can help you to uh, implement a such a solution. To uh, start with cloud, so what is cloud? So I identified three different models which we can interpret cloud. So based on usage, deployment, and hosting. So usage can be either infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, or software as a service. And deployment base can be either private, public, or hybrid. Then, depending on how you, uh, who deploy this solution, either the enterprise can deploy them themselves, or some third-party vendor can do it. So uh, these are the steps I identified. So we'll walk you through one by one. First of all, uh, we need to analyze our solution architecture. So in this example, I have taken a uh, sample car manufacturer, which uses uh, seven different systems. So starting with CRM, project management, manufacturing, maintenance, and so on. So at the first phase, we need to go through our solution architecture and identify different systems that we use, how they talk to each other, and uh, with the complexity of each system. Then as a second step, we can identify which system we can move to the cloud. In real life, we might not be able to move the entire solution into the cloud-based deployment, but rather, it would be better if we can identify different systems which has, like, considering dependencies, integrations, data sensitivity, and whether they can scale in a cloud environment, whether they have session affinity. So considering those facts, we can select some of the systems that we can move to the cloud in the first phase. Once we are done with that, we can identify different cloud models that the selected system would fit in. Say I have a, a manufacturing system, uh, might be a legacy one, so I might not be able to run it on a platform as a service. But I should be able to run it on an infrastructure as a service because it just provides me a set of VMs and the network and so on, so I should be able to move it there. So then. Some system might be able to run on a pass, and some even we should be able to run on a SaaS. So depending on different systems, we can categorize them into different deployment models and uh, label them. Then, OK, we, are now know, we know what exactly the deployment model we are going to use. So now depending on our infrastructure, maybe our on-premise infrastructure, and which public cloud vendors we are going to use, we might need to decide whether um, we are going to go with a private cloud deployment or whether it, it is going to be a public cloud or a combination of both. Then we can identify, OK, if I'm going with a private cloud, what are the systems or cloud platforms I can use? So there are infrastructure as service solutions such as VMware, OpenStack, CloudStack, and if I want container cluster managers, so I can use Mesos, Kubernetes, and OpenShift. So for my public cloud, as you may already know, you can use AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, and many other platforms. Then uh, we need to come up with a deployment process. Say if, I'm, if you are going to do a hybrid cloud deployment, how I'm going to manage my development process how my artifacts are going to be deployed in each environment, how those are going to be governed, and how I'm going to manage the configuration, and how I'm going to do the artifact distribution, and so forth. So it's really important to follow this, like focus on this step. Otherwise, when we start the deployment process, we would encounter a lot of problems, and it would take a lot of time to complete the initial deployment, because if you do not have a proper plan, for the deployment process. Here, 
for configuration management, we can use systems like Puppet, Chef, Ansible, uh, and SolStack. And for artifact distribution, we can use uh, a version control system like JIT. Then, uh, how do we propagate our deliveries between different environments? So even though I have a hybrid deployment architecture, I might need to manage a, a series of environments. I might need a dev environment, a test, a performance test, a pre-prod and a prod. So then I need to focus how I'm going to uh, move my application artifacts between these environments. Then it would be better to start with a POC. So from the systems we selected, select a few of them for the POC and do a feasibility study and see how we can implement a, uh, a simple solution to start with. So in my on-premise cloud, I can start with my HR system, the manufacturing system, and in my public cloud, I can select one of the simple systems. Then you can refine the POC and integrate the uh, deployment process, how I do uh, continuous integration. So once we are done, all of, done with all of these steps, so we can go into a pre-production environment and then run, run it parallel with our current system and then take a step to move to the cloud. So I suppose this covers almost all high-level uh, important facts that we need to follow when moving to a cloud-based solution. So now, how do we do uh, integrations between such systems if you're going to a cloud-based solution? So it would be better, rather than doing point-to-point -point connections, to use an integration platform, such as an uh, enterprise service bus, a message broker, a business process server for doing the integrations between systems. Then, do I need an API manager solution? So if, I, if my solution or my organization expose APIs for my partners and other uh, external users to communicate with our solution, then it would be better to have API manager in place. So if I'm going with a hybrid solution, I might need a separate API manager in each environment. Then how do we manage users, permissions, and roles? So we call this identity. So if there are like collection of systems in place in our solution, it would be better to use an identity management solution that would, can provide single sign-on and uh, user permission management and so forth. So then we can have it in a central place to manage the entire solution. So once all of those things are in place, if we do not, include an analytic system, we would not know that how our solution performs well, or whether I need to scale them up, or whether I need to use auto-scaling, or whether I need to do manual scaling based on uh, a given specific uh, 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 capacity plan. So it would be better if we can integrate an analytic system where it would gather statistics from different systems and display it in a single centralized dashboard so you can take decisions on our solution. Now, how can WS2 help to implement a, such a system? So WS2 provides an uh, integration platform which includes WS2 message broker, enterprise service bus, and the business process server. Depending on your requirement, you can use uh, either one of these or a combination to do the integration. So WS2 API Manager can be used as the API management solution, and Identity Server provides a comprehensive uh, identity management solution where you can uh, integrate different identity providers, uh, different uh, third-party identity uh, uh, providing solutions into a single solution, and then build a uh, unified platform. Now. Uh, Talking about ESB, so it provides a collection of e connectors, over 150 connectors, to integrate different systems together on the cloud. So that includes uh, eBay, PayPal, PeopleHR, Twitter, and so on. So using these connectors, uh, if your solution needs to talk to different cloud-based systems, you can integrate those into your system. Then for identity server also, we now provide 
a collection of authenticators and connectors to integrate different identity systems into your solution. So then WC2 also offers a public cloud solution which provides different types of cloud platforms. So currently, we host API Cloud and uh, App, Man, uh, App Cloud. And we are currently working on an integration cloud, which will be available in alpha stage in a few weeks' time. And in the future, we are planning to also publish a device cloud, an identity cloud, and an analytics cloud. So WS2 also provides a managed cloud solution. So what is managed cloud? So if an enterprise needs to build a solution using WC2 products, so WC2 offers the deployment and management of the system. So the enterprise do not need to manage the infrastructure. Rather, WC2 engineers will do the installation and manage it and provide SLA, guaranteed SLAs. And uh, if the organization needs to uh, run this in a private network, in a public cloud, so it supports uh, implementing VPNs and integrations with on-premise uh, networks, and also available in many different AWS regions. So WS2 also provides uh, platform as a service solutions based on well-known container cluster management solutions. So currently we have released uh, artifacts for deploying WC2 products on these platforms, and uh, you can use them to uh, fully automate the deployment, including uh, features like uh, carbon cluster discovery on each platform, which, pop, like, which is done by a separate uh, carbon membership scheme. So we ship all of those artifacts for you to automate this deployment. 